why harden your home? In Southern California, over half of homes which are damaged or destroyed by wildfire are ignited by wind-blown embers. Home hardening is about improving the structure, materials, and maintenance of your house to keep embers out. So home hardening is something that is less famous than defensible space, but it's just as important. And it's usually a set of strategies that we use to improve the resistance of single home components that can be structural or non-structural. And usually we look at what vulnerabilities are around, for example, the roof, or other parts of the house, and we retrofit or exchange those components to make sure that they're resistant to embers and flame exposure. Today we'll cover three home hardening techniques. Retrofitting your vents, installing gutter guards, and filling gaps. These upgrades are low cost and effective at reducing the risk of ignition to your home. Often the biggest vulnerability is your vents. This includes attic and roofing vents, as well as foundation vents. Embers often enter through a vent and can burn a house down from the inside out. Older homes typically have quarter-inch screens on their vents. I can just see that it's quarter-inch screening on the inside. While this keeps rodents out, scientists and fire personnel have found that 1 8 to 1 16 inch screens are better for keeping embers out. Screens should be metal, not fiberglass or plastic mesh, which could melt or burn. Another option is to hire someone to do a fire safe vent. The California State Fire Marshal has approved a variety of flame-resistant vents, such as Vulcan, Brandguard, and Wildfire Defense Mesh. If you want to try retrofitting your vents yourself, let's walk through the process with some folks who do it every day. Hi! Hi. How are you? Good. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good to see you. Today we're going to retrofit these vents with Wildfire Defense Mesh. It's a, a new product that's on the market. It's approved by the State Fire Marshal's Office. It's a stainless steel product. Uh, very rigid, critters can't get into it, it's, it's, it's going to last a long time, but most importantly, it's going to keep those embers out. Awesome, let's get started. Let's do it. Let's do it. So before starting your project, it's good to get a complete vent count. Walk around the house and count the number of vents that you see along the foundation, along the eaves, on the roof, and on the sides of the house at the gables. I see one, two, three, four, five, but I'm gonna look behind this bush. And sure enough, we do have one way back there. At the end, we'll count them up and figure out how much material we're gonna need for this entire project. You also wanna make sure you look up into the eaves. I see one eave vent right there. It looks like they've replaced some of the vents on the exterior. I'm gonna look inside to see what size of mesh that they have here. And it is quarter inch mesh. We will still retrofit this vent by um, placing the ember resistant mesh on there. If the homeowner wanted to have this put back on, we can put this back on over it. This is a dryer vent and you wanna make sure you always clear out your dryer vent dust. If there is a fire nearby and there's ember showering here, they can ignite that buildup. Perfect. We have a total of 14 foundation vents, two attic vents in the gables, 13 eave vents, two wall openings that will need to have mesh on them, and we found one crawl space vent that will need mesh as well. Okay, so there's two ways we can do this. It, we can come in from the inside through the crawl space and put it behind there, but if there's not enough room or you don't want to take that challenge of crawling underneath your house, April cut this perfect to fit on the outside. Now, there's a little metal frame around here that we're gonna be tapping into. If your vent doesn't have that metal frame, you can make it a little bit bigger and use a stucco screw. So the screws I'm using are self-tapping screws that we got at a big box store. So we're gonna line it up. Okay. There's one. We have no gaps around here. We just retrofitted a vent. So now we're gonna talk about gutters. Now typically we clean out our gutters just before the rainy season because we want the water to shed off the roof and out away from the house. The problem becomes after the rainy season, we ignore it. That's when debris from over the winter will gather in those gutters. And when the hot dry weather comes and there's a wildfire, embers will catch that debris on fire and set the edge of the roof on fire. To compound the matters, if you've got plastic gutters, those gutters will actually catch on fire and set the house on fire, then fall away and set the bottom of the house on fire. So it's real important that we have gutter guards installed on our gutters. 
Now there are many manufacturers of gutter guards. And the important thing to remember is they need to be made out of a non-combustible material. And that the aperture, the holes in it, need to shed the water and keep the debris out. Now this is a special one with a copper lining for copper gutters. So when we attach it, we avoid the electrolysis because of the incompatible uh, materials that are involved. These install very simply. They slide up underneath the roof, they clip in, and we can secure them with screws. Today, we're gonna use the Wildfire Defense Mesh. Now this is a stainless steel mesh, 16th inch aperture to it, it's very durable. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the mesh so it gives us enough to go underneath the roof. Then we'll be able to slide it underneath and secure it along that edge using our self-tapping screws. When installing this wildfire mesh, if you've got a joint where you're joining two pieces of mesh, you don't wanna butt them together here because you could have a gap that will increase over time. So we're gonna overlap it to prevent any gaps from forming after it's installed. Now, it'll gather the water but it's gonna keep the debris out. Thanks so much, we learned a lot today. Thanks for having us out. Thank you. Now that we've addressed the vents and gutters, let's shift our focus to gaps where embers might get in. A gap is any spacing one eighth of an inch or two quarters stacked together. Check your eaves for any gaps. Looks like this gap needs to be addressed. Today we're gonna to reduce the risk by filling this gap with caulking. We're gonna cut just the tip off then we gotta put a hole in it. Now we can place it in here. We gotta tighten it. All set. Next, wipe any excess off with a damp paper towel. Apply caulking in any natural gaps or divots in the wood. Repainting can keep the wood fresh and protect from natural weathering. If any part of your eaves show signs of more serious gaps caused by rot or termites, it is important to replace those sections as soon as possible. I'm looking for any gaps in your eaves where embers might get stuck, and they look pretty good right here. I'd recommend repainting the wood to help protect from weathering. Sometimes it's recommended to box in or soffit the eaves. Mm -hmm. This can be helpful. However, the most effective thing to do is fill gaps and remove any combustible items close to the eaves, such as attached fences, vines, branches, or sheds. After fixing your eaves, apply the same concepts to your siding and fill any significant gaps with caulking. Even if building materials are fire resistant, they can burn if embers are able to get behind them and ignite insulation or other flammable material. Finally, let's check around the windows and doors to make sure there are no gaps. When inspecting window frames, look for gaps in the frame itself, as well as between the frame and the siding. You can add caulking or replace the window frames as needed. When looking at door frames, make sure the door sits properly with no gaps between the door and the frame. If you notice this, then you can install a door sweep. This door has a significant gap. We still want to prevent embers from entering and igniting any flammable items inside. We're gonna install a door sweep so that embers can't sneak under. It's a good idea to measure the door sweep to make sure that it fits. We're gonna cut it to size. Before sticking it on, it's important to clean off the door. Now it's just a simple adhesive. No more embers sneaking under this door. This is a common problem for garage doors. If you can see daylight coming in around the garage door, then you know you have a problem. To prevent embers from entering these gaps, you can install weather stripping on the bottom and sides of the garage door. As you install it, be sure to pull it taut so that it covers all the gaps. Check out our other videos to learn more about defensible space and fire ecology. Thanks for watching.